It's good to be with you this morning, even though, as usual, we are physically distanced across the ether. It's good to be with everyone, and you know that you're all here with us because we've got the pictures pasted to the back of the pews. But even more importantly, is saying thank you to all of those who have made this service come together. David Hamilton at the keyboard leading us as our music minister, but also Catherine Crawford and Rad Michelson, who are assisting with music this morning, as well as singing an anthem with flute and guitar and their gorgeous voices, I'm envious. But thank you very much, both of you, for doing that for us this morning and leading us in that way. Thank you to Sarah McKenzie, who has put together the slide presentation, and who, by the way, will be on holiday for the next two weeks. Jim and Judy Zerubic, as usual, who are up in the balcony as our ever experienced and gracious tech crew. They're willing to make us sound, yeah, she's, she's got a gun to her head right now, it's by her finger. Stu Metzger, our new custodian. John Phillips and Liz Dillman, who make everything happen financially for the congregation. And it's my pleasure to welcome the Reverend Richard Hall, who is here to co-preside at this worship service during Worldwide Communion Sunday. So Richard, it's a real pleasure to have you here, all the way from Wingham. Um, we use the screens, as you know, a lot, and therefore, whenever you see red print in bold, that is for everyone to read, and uh, the black print in bold is for, pardon me, the, the worship leader only the red print in bold, and the black print in bold is for everyone to read together. Let's practice that as we recognize the territory in which we gather. The acknowledgement of the land. Concordia United Church takes seriously the commitments made to First Nations communities through the National Truth and Reconciliation Commission report, especially through the calls to action to churches like us. Therefore, Therefore we acknowledge this day, day that we gathered for worship on the, on the traditional, traditional territories, territories of the Saugeen Ojibwe and the other Indigenous peoples who preceded them the original nations of this land, and we acknowledge with respect their history, their spirituality, and their culture. There are a few announcements that I'd like to highlight for you this morning. The first one is to say an official welcome to Stu Metzger, who is our new custodian. He started on Thursday, October 1st. He was in here doing a, 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 a long tour and orientation on Saturday morning, and it was my pleasure to, to welcome him then as Ralph Knowles was guiding him through the church. So yay, we've got Stu! Secondly, um, we also have, remember on our mission, son, pardon me, yeah, um, well, look at that, I've got my, my announcements out of order. We'll let you read the cartoon, and because of the cartoon, and because we don't have choir with us here, how can you keep from singing? So from November 1st on, we want to augment our worship by singing during the live streaming service. As you know, we've got Catherine and Rad this morning. Just contact David Hamilton by calling the church office and the message will get to him and he can contact you so that we can have the music augmented and you're not just listening to me sing, which is probably not the greatest. We also have a wonderful, this is Aged Alamary the youngest of the four newcomer children who came from Syria by way of the Lebanese refugee camp where they stayed for six years after fleeing Syria, and he is adjusting well. I had the privilege of driving him to and from school uh, for the first three days of this, uh, this week until we got his busing arranged. So if you wish to donate money towards the refugee committee, donations can be make, made out to Concord United Church with the memo line, Refugee Family, and we'll make sure the money gets to the, refuge, uh, to the, to the Refugee Steering Committee. As well, um, you'll remember our Mission Sunday uh, focused on Chalmers Community Garden Project. And next Saturday at nine o'clock in the morning, um, there we invite those interested in helping out in planting garlic cloves to contact me. And my phone number is both there on the announcement, it's on the uh, online announcements, and it is also um, uh, on the website, if you call in to the church, you will find that my, num my uh, cell phone number is there as well. 
We also have a new capital project. We've discovered that, especially as the gas lines were being laid, that um, our uh, heat pumps for air conditioning are on their last legs. Our furnaces are well past their best before date. And so uh, we're looking to raise money for the capital project. Our goal is about uh, 20 to $30,000. And I am happy to announce that we have over $1,000 already donated towards this project. So thank you so much to all of those who are looking at giving to this congregation's ministry through maintaining the building. And this is, as you may have noticed, Worldwide Communion Sunday. So if you haven't got a beverage and bread ready for later in the service to partake, feel free to scurry around and do that now. But I also want to uh, lift up for you that uh, during the communion liturgy, there will be uh, a time of community prayers during which we will be listening to an anthem by Catherine and Rad, which is really a prayer. And in that prayer, if you would lift Marianne and Ralph Knoll's grandson, 16-year-old Jake, in prayer. He had a very serious bicycle accident. Let's just say there aren't too many parts of his body that haven't either been broken or damaged. So please keep Marianne and Ralph as well as their grandson Jake in your prayers. Recent services can be found on our YouTube channel. They're recorded. Also, you can watch the service a week later. So if you're watching this on TV, that means you're probably watching on Thanksgiving Sunday. Uh, and because it's a week later, you can also find on the Rogers uh, um, website, uh, without any necess necessity for cable TV, you can watch the services there as well. And finally, fireside chats are posted usually every Tuesday from my kitchen. There's some humor, some reflection, some music, a prayer, and a blessing. And I'd invite you for this, it's usually anywhere between 18 and 22 minutes. Uh, so it's a little shorter offering and what you would get if you watched worship. As the church has done for millennia, let us greet one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also, also with you. And as weird as it may seem, I would invite you to share that peace with whomever's in the room with you at this time, or just generally to those that you're thinking about. Let's join together and anticipate the communion we feel in the midst of Christ's eternal presence. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. This is the light of Christ amongst us. It is the light that shows us that even one tiny flame can make a difference in a world that seems overwhelming and chaotic. May this light be our guide, our source of strength, and our daring to change the world for love. Let us join together in the call to worship and the prayer of approach that you'll find on the screens. Come into this place of worship and know we are not alone. Christians around the world gather today to celebrate worldwide communion. 
we come to immerse within the holy mystery who is holy love. Come from living rooms, from offices, from bedrooms, from backyard decks. Come from wherever you are as we commune over the distance. We come despite missing one another so deeply, missing the conversation, the hugs and the handshake, the small talk and the deeper sharing, yet knowing we are part of the spirited whole. Come as we pay attention to God's eternal presence as we pray. Loving God, who is holy mystery, beyond complete knowledge and above perfect description, in love may you embrace us with living relationship. Tend us as you mend us, enlighten us as you transform us. May we become the harmony of the beloved, which sings of your good news. Open our hearts to other diverse hearts making us beacons of self-giving love for one another worldwide. Amen. Let's join together in seeing the first hymn, hymn number 154 from Vo More Voices, Deep in Our Hearts. wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, which is more than liberty. So says the hymn. St. Augustine said, Lord, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. When we give our lives over to the source of life, the ground of our being, it is there that we find rest. The restlessness we may feel results when we wrong others, wrong ourselves, or even wrong God. This guilt can paralyze our lives and prevent us from being all that we might otherwise be for good. Through the saving grace of Christ of the cross, God assures us that when we confess these wrongs, God will wash away our guilt. God will forgive us and cleanse us and refresh us with new life to live better, to live for others and to live for God. But it begins with recognizing and owning up to the source of guilt, that which we would hopefully change in our lives. So let us approach the throne of grace as we silently make our confession to God.
Amen. There are so many times, even especially within a pandemic, that we think, oh, woe is us. Things just aren't the way we want them to be. All of our longings, all of our wishes, all of our dreams seem to be dashed upon the rocks of hard reality. And yet, I want to offer you this story called Jesse's Surprise Gift as a way of thinking differently. Let's, let's start the story. More than anything else in the world, Jesse wanted a guitar. See, Red? There you go. He wanted to make music. He wanted to hear the squeak of his fingers on the strings, but there was no money for a guitar. Still, Jesse kept hoping. At breakfast early one Saturday morning, Jesse found a small brown package next to his bowl. When he tore off the paper, he saw what looked like a round lump of clay with holes in it. What is it? He asked. It's an ocar ocarina. Pardon me. I've never seen one myself. His mother explained, a kind of flute. See, there you go, Catherine. If I had the money, Jesse, I would buy you a guitar. But for now, I thought this might be fun. Jesse swallowed a lump of disappointment and gave his mom a thank you hug. After breakfast, Jesse put the ocarina in his pocket and went for a walk. Outside the subway station, he saw a young man sitting on the sidewalk, his head in his hands. Can I help you? asked Jesse. My harmonica is gone, wailed the young man, eaten by a slobbery dog. Every day I come here and play and people put money in my hat, but now I have nothing to play. What am I going to do? Jesse reached into his pocket and took out his ocarina. Could you use this, he asked. The young man put the ocarina to his lips and played a tune so sweet that people walking by tossed five dollar bills into his hat. You can keep it, said Jesse. You need it more than I do. How can I thank you, asked the young man. From deep in his pocket, he pulled out a silver subway token. Here, he handed the token to Jesse. Maybe you can take a ride to some place you've never been before. Jesse walked away, imagining all the places he could go. While he was daydreaming, he saw a girl pushing her bicycle toward him. She was crying. Can I help you? asked Jesse. I want to go home, sobbed the girl. I rode a long way to have a picnic, but now I have a flat tire. Oh, 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 will I get back? Jesse stopped and thought. Then he held out his subway token. You can have this. You need it more than I do. Oh, thank you, cried the girl. She thrust the paper bag at Jesse. Take my lunch. Then she was gone. Jesse peered into the bag. In it were two samosas, a pear, and a bottle of pomegranate juice. He headed to the park to enjoy his surprise picnic. Nearby, he met a ragged old man leaning up against a wall. Spare some change for something to eat, mumbled the man. Jesse stopped. Then he offered the man his paper bag. You can have my picnic lunch if you like. You need it more than I do. The man took the bag eagerly. Hey, thanks. You're a good kid. You know, I found this city map on the sidewalk, but maybe you can use it. Jesse took the map and went on his way. A few blocks later, he came upon a woman and a man arguing. I asked you if you brought the invitation, snapped the woman. I did bring it, retorted the man. How was I supposed to know there was a map with it? Can I help you? asked Jesse. We're lost, explained the woman. We're on our way to a party, but we have no idea how to find the house. I have a map, said Jesse. You can have it. You need it more than I do. The woman gave Jesse a few flowers. The man dropped a handful of coins into Jesse's palm. Get yourself an ice cream, he said. 
Then they hurried away to the party. Jesse kept on walking. He wondered if today was a strawberry or a chocolate ice cream day. He had almost made up his mind when he saw something strange. Up ahead was the man running in circles, waving a $20 bill over his head. In a high voice, he cried over and over, please, does anyone have change, please? Can I help you, asked Jesse. My wife is having a baby, shouted the man. I need to go now, but I have no coins for the parking meter. Jesse stopped and thought. Then he gave the man his whole pocket full of change. You need this more than I do, he said. Take these flowers, too. Thank you, cried the man, stuffing money into the meter as fast as he could. Then he thrust the $20 bill into Jesse's hand. Buy yourself something, he cried, and ran toward the hospital. What a strange day this has been, thought Jesse. He decided to take his $20 and go home. Along the way, he passed a house with many cars parked in front of it. Someone was having a garage sale. Jesse went to take a closer look. He caught his breath. Under a table was an old guitar. Jesse knelt down and touched it gently. His fingers squeaked on the strings. Is this guitar for sale? He asked the woman behind the table. Yes, she said. Do you play? Not yet, Jesse answered, but I want to more than anything else in the world. The woman smiled at him. This guitar belonged to my son. I bought it for him when he was a little boy. Now he has moved away and has a new guitar. How much does it cost? asked Jesse. $25. Jesse hung his head. I only have $20. The woman smiled again. Then it's yours for 20. You need it more than I do. It took Jesse quite a while to walk home because the guitar was almost bigger than he was. When he got there at last, his mother was waiting for him. She saw the guitar. What on earth? Where did that come from? Jesse gave his mother a hug. It's a long story, Mom. Believe it or not, I traded my ocarina for it. Filled to the brim with joy, Jesse went to his room to practice. Even in the midst of what seems to be insurmountable odds, if you dare to give of yourself and to look out for others, your life will be changed. For love. Let's join together in the prayer that says much about love as we sing the Lord's Prayer. Bible reading this morning is from Colossians chapter 3 verses 4 to 11. When Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death therefore whatever in you is earthly, 
fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Let's join together and sing, Though I May Speak, Voices United, number 372. <laughs> second reading is from Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 to 14. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. join together in prayer. Loving God. Loving. Loving is your call to us, your purpose for us, your presence within us. May you ever keep that in our hearts and in our souls. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It's not easy to love. It's never easy to love. 
In fact, it's probably one of the hardest things to do. Oh, sure, we, we have romantic comedies all the time that talk about the fact that, oh, you can just fall in love like that. And even when you want to punch the other person in the face, that eventually you'll come around and you'll fall in love and things will be hunky-dory and you'll get married and live happily ever after. And we know that isn't real. Hollywood does a good job of it. And sometimes they make things that actually are somewhat believable. But if we look at the letter to the Colossians that Paul wrote, it's interesting that Paul is writing to the church of Colossae. And Colossae was one of the major trade centers in Asia, Asia Minor in the time. In fact, you may have heard the term Colossus, meaning giant huge. In the harbor of Colossae, there were two branches of the port, natural rock formations. And straddling that was a giant picture, a giant sculpture of Atlas, through which some of the smaller ships would sail before they hit their port. And so Colossians, Colossae, Colossus, this is an important place of commerce, of government. It was part of the Roman outpost that was an, a, an essential footprint of the Roman Empire in that area. And in that bustling, busy town, Paul had planted a small house church. People who had listened to him as he was working the leather for the tents and the, the armor that he made for the Roman battalions and all the centurions, he was one of many who made that. But as he was working, as his strong hands were weaving the fabric of hides together, people would sit and listen as they waited for their purchase. And he would talk about the good news of Jesus Christ. He would talk about his conversion experience on the road to Damascus. He would talk about even though he was one who had been persecuting the early believers of the nascent church of the way of Jesus, he had come to his senses because Jesus had met him on that road. And yet, in the midst of this city, Colossae, they were an anomaly. Their whole purpose was based on love, and yet all around them was nothing but what's in it for me. Nothing but power play. Nothing but bullying and class systems and a disregard and oppression of all of those who didn't mean much. At least not in the world of commerce and of political intrigue. It really doesn't sound much different than our world today. I know that there may have been many of you who avoided watching the presidential debate on Tuesday this week, but I'm sure there are many of you who have heard about it as it was plastered all over the social media, all over the news feeds, everywhere. And regardless of what side of the political divide you are on, that did not speak to me of anything more than trying to project power, abuse of power, power that has no consideration for the other. And our world is not much different here. There are always demands, always wishes, just like Jesse's wish for a guitar, we see what we don't have instead of what we do have. And we wish we were on the top instead of others. And yet, Paul writes to the church in Colossae and says, I have good news. But it's not the news that you expect. If you think that the good news that I'm going to share with you is all about the fact that you, you too, if you follow these instructions, will be on the top of the heap. No, here's the good news. We want you to be loving. Yes, I know that that doesn't get you anywhere as far as power politics nor in economy, but still, we want you to be loving. We want you to consider 
how important relationships are, relationships of love. Not relationships that are all about you and what you can get out of it, but rather about what you can do and give to others. And then Paul would continue to remind them of the story of Jesus. After all, Jesus was probably one of the worst evangelists in the world. In all history, he slowly but surely gathers the disciples after him. He starts to get followed by lots of crowds. Notoriety certainly has an attraction to many. And by the end of his teaching, the end of his life, all of the people who followed him were gone, except those who remained to say, crucify him. All of the people that he had called his disciples were gone except for a few women waiting at the foot of his cross for him to die, bearing witness to a life lived well. And then Paul reminds them, Jesus is Lord. Not the Romans, not the economy, Jesus is Lord because love is the key to everything. And it, 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 it would seem to be a concept that was really difficult in that society to promulgate, just as it is difficult today. How do we love? There's a book out there called The Five Languages of Love, and, and the five of them are words of affirmation. So if you've ever had somebody come to you and say, wow, I really enjoyed hearing that story about, you're a great storyteller, you're a great flute player, you're a great guitar player, you're both great singers, you are amazing on the organ bench, you guys are fabulous at the tech stuff, even if it has to mean that you get up earlier in the morning than you want to. You are amazing as a wise guide and companion and colleague along the way. How is it that that isn't love? It builds relationship. Then there's acts of service. You know how it goes. I've been to a number of, of gatherings of family when we're remembering the person who has died in the family. And, and often I'll say, well, how did you know they loved you? Oh, the kids would say, well, you know, he or she never really said much that they loved us. But, you know, they were always there for us. They were always making sure that we were cared for. They always made sure we had the clothing we needed, the food we needed, all of that acts of service. There are some who are really good at receiving gifts. I must admit, my kids are three of them. Because you knew very early on, and it was their, their grandmother, my mom, who taught them that. Because you see, no matter what they got for Christmas, even if it wasn't something that they really wanted, they would gush over it and say, oh, well, thank you so much, just what I always needed. They'd ask what it was, and then they would say, oh yeah, well I can use it for this and that. There's a gift of love of affirmation because you've been trying to give to them. Quality time. You know how it is when people look through you when you're talking with them? They're not really present. It's like you're the wallpaper. You don't matter. But there are those people who are able to look at you and see the inner self that are willing to be there for you just as you are, to love you as you are, to be there with you as you struggle and dance through life. And there are those who show their love by physical touch. I know that I'm one of those, and, and frankly, this pandemic is killing me. I, I sent a, a, an email out to all my kids and their partners, and, and I said, Whenever this pandemic is over, whether it's sooner or later, whether it's in a year or five, it doesn't matter. Just be prepared for a really long, uncomfortable hug when this is all over. There are ways to show love. 
that we don't often recognize. There was, when I was living in Burlington, a homeless couple that came to me at the church looking for help. And after a long hour and a half conversation with them, because they were homeless and they had nowhere to go, but they couldn't get the benefits they needed at that time, I invited them to move in with me. Now, the love was not mine. It wasn't because I had invited them to live with me. The love that they gave was they were willing to come. After all, how intimidating can it be to live with the minister? It's, you know, and you're on the street, and you know, and this I found, I, I found out as, as we got to know each other better, both of them were living with multiple psychiatric disorders. Both of them were addicted to opiates. Both of them had a criminal record. Both of them had, well, between them, five children, all in children's aid. Both of them felt enormous shame. So imagine the risk that it was for them to say, yes, we'll pack up what we have and we'll move in with you. Their gift of love was in accepting my gift. Their gift of love was in teaching me from the underside what it was like to live with multiple psychiatric disorders, what it was like to, try, to, to wake up in the middle of the night and find yourself walking bare through a foot through a field filled with dew and not remembering anything because you were actually sleepwalking. What it's like to feel as though nobody cares and that you are less than insignificant and that you don't matter. In this world, where it often seems that it's what's in it for me is the best motivating factor to get ahead, they taught me what love truly is. They taught me that love is the hard work of being present for one another. They taught me, as Paul writes to the church in Colossae, that at the center of it all, is the risen Christ, because it was the risen Christ who showed us giving all of yourself for others is a gift that keeps on giving back. And I pray for all of us that we learn to live out loud, to love out loud, and not to be afraid, but to dare what love truly is. May it be so. Amen. Come as people invited into the story of self-giving. Come as people led by the suffering servant the one whose very narrative brings new life. Come as people who gathered at Christ's table around the world, for all are welcome and none are excluded. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them up, up to God. God. Let us give God our thanks and praise. It, it is right to give God our thanks and praise. and praise. Our story is God's story, so we remember. The infant universe was our cradle and our nursery. The baby Moses, protected by his teenage sister, became a leader who freed and enslaved people. The boy Samuel listened to God and shared tough wisdom. The psalmist declared that a child will lead them whenever we needed God's presence. God was there in the gift of love, speaking through the voices of stories alive interpreted through the eyes of children. When there were times of homelessness and wandering, when there were times of violence and rejection, 
when there were times of homecoming and welcome. God was there in the gift of love, in the giving away of what was most precious. When people sought ever more land, ever more power, and ever more prestige. When people of faith looked more to legalisms and laws, ignoring the aching needs of others. When people yearned to listen to the story of faith, pushing aside the criticisms of others. God was there in the gift of love, in the assurance that we are all special in God's eyes, that God's narrative lives within hearts transformed. When new influences and difficult circumstances challenged, when uncertainty and doubt moved in, when security and certainty seemed the only shelters, God, God was there in the gift of love, teaching us deep connection with God and each other, showing us our narrative rooted in God's heart. Yet fire and division rent us asunder as we turned away from love. In our worrying about how to make ends meet in this pandemic, we couldn't hear God's belief in us. In our desire to continue to do things as we have always done, we couldn't hear Jesus' call to healing in new life. In our need to build ourselves up in order to tear others down, we couldn't hear the Spirit's truth within us that we are in this together. We forgot our story. We forgot that, that God is within, within us, us as the, the gift, gift of love self-given. Yet God did not forget. God gave God's own self unconditionally and in love that we might once again remember our story and our identity. And so it was on the night in which he was betrayed that Jesus took the bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he poured it out and he told them, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new blessing poured out in my blood. In our living every day, we endeavor to bring love, healing, joy, and hope. In our prayers, we seek understanding and comfort for others, shining the light of Christ in times of need as caring and honest friends to one another. As we listen to the words and the harmonies of this morning's anthem, hear our silent, heartfelt prayers of God as requested as trust in your response for ourselves and for others. Change those 
Let us pray together. Help, Help us, loving spirit, to remember our story as we, we share, share these ordinary elements at Christ's table this morning. May you bless us with your constant companionship, with your guiding light, with your embrace of grace, with your inspiration into transformation. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for us all. Please take the bread and the beverage that you have prepared and partake. If there are others with you, feel free to share it with them and to commune together, knowing that all around the world, we are following the way of Jesus as our own path of becoming. Let us pray once more, together and united at table. Through, Through communion with you, O Christ, Christ we, we are made new. Through what, what we, we have, have said and done, we remember your self-giving. Through your spirit, we become empowered in your name to go into the world to tell our story in yours. Thank you, God of love. Amen. There are many of you who continue to give to King Carden United Church and the mission and ministry we all share in so many ways. I have a slide to show you, though. Some of you often wonder, and you just ignore the guy who's taking the picture in there, the reason there's a reflection staring back at you is this is the new door at the ramp side of the church 
that will soon be fully installed. It's not yet ready, the mechanism hasn't been attached, and the uh, power hasn't been run to it, but this shows you that thanks to many of you who've donated thousands of dollars, I believe this project uh, is close to $10,000, we now will have, when we're ready to come back into the building and once the pandemic is safe enough, we will have a fully accessible door that will be opened by just touching the button, either inside or out. So thank you so much to so many of you who have made this happen because this too is part of our mission to welcome all. Let us ask God for blessings on all that we give of our time, of our talent and our treasure. Let us pray together. We dedicate these gifts, we return to you, O God, as signs of our fierce love for others, as our protection of human dignity, as our community of faith becoming an instrument of your mending, as our commitment to Christ's mission of self-giving. Bless us and what we give as our response to your abundant love. Amen. So let's join together in singing, Take My Life and Let It Be. You'll see the words on the screens. So go, not as Canadians who say, take off, eh? But rather as Canadians who follow the way of Jesus and do say to God, take my life and let it be a sign of your love lived out loud. Go, go as those who have been gathered by the sender of love, upheld by the one who came in love, sent out in the power of love. Go in peace.
Thank you.